Let's consider the points which have now a positive or negative separation from the oxygen and see what they represent. So we'll just see points which are positive space-time separation from the origin. Essentially S squared is some positive value and then T squared has to be, or C squared, T squared has to be less than X squared. If we just now simply just plot these parabolas where this is some positive constant. Now just pr plotting the parabola with S being positive we can see that having a positive S corresponds to the points which I've drawn on these two parabolas here. So now again we need to just realise and abandon our Euclidean notion of distance and realise that two points that lie on this orange line, they're all the same Minkowski separation from the origin, even though our kind of Euclidean brain wants to assign a different distance to these two lines. In Minkowski space, all the points on this orange line are the same space-time distance away from this origin. So these are the points in which ds squared is positive. Now let's consider what happens when s squared becomes negative. Essentially when c squared t squared is greater than x squared, this whole thing is going to become negative. And just simply setting the left hand side equal to some negative number, we get another equation for some other hyperbole which looks like this. So this is ds squared negative. And so they're fairly similar parabolas, they've just had a, effectively a factor of minus one introduced, it's just rotated one by 90 degrees around this origin. And again, points on this parabola are all the same Minkowski distance from our origin. So, what we should now realise is that effectively this ds squared equals zero point is effectively now kind of splitting Minkowski space into two kind of distinct regions. We have this region over here in which the line element is positive and then this region up here in which the line element is negative. And then on the border lines, the line element is zero, which I've kind of already alluded to correspond to the trajectory that light would follow. This is the light cone. And the, the light cone effectively kind of splits Minkowski space into two distinct regions. Now we'll have more to say about this in the future, but I just want to comment for, for now that this kind of first region in which the line element is now negative, where we're kind of inside the light cone, if you like, because an observer traveling on a world line, which say looks something like that, and is always within this light cone, the gradient never exceeds that kind of 45 degree value of the light cone. This is what we should view as being kind of the, the causal future of this origin point here. Because essentially it's the, all of the points in Minkowski space which you could reach by effectively sending out some kind of probe or observer travelling at, at or less than the speed of light. So this light cone effectively represents your maximum possible viewable universe from this origin point here because effectively it's all of the universe that you can see, all of the events in Minkowski space that you can view that are reachable to you by sending out a light ray essentially. So we sometimes like to call this kind of patch of Minkowski space within this light cone, the forward light cone and then we would call this the, the backwards light cone or the historic light cone. This is essentially everything that could possibly communicate with you from the entire universe by sending a light ray to you or 
a slower particle. So now this light cone effectively defines your causal, if you like, past and future. And now within your causal past and future, you will, we, you will always be measuring points in Minkowski space which are negative or ha that have a negative distance from you essentially. And we now sometimes like, or this by definition, when the line element is negative, it's kind of within your future light cone, we refer to this as time-like separations. So any two points that are within your future light cone that have a negative separation from you, we say that they're time-like separated from you. Because essentially, you could reach that point by following a world line that is time-like, as we say. Now we're going to talk more about this in future because we're going to see essentially we can analyse world lines based on their character, which we effectively compute by looking at their tangent vector and seeing effectively whether or not it points in the time-like direction. And now if ds squared is negative, it's time-like. Just the other definitions, if ds squared is equal to zero, we say it's light-like, or null. So any two points in Minkowski space that are light-like separated, that have ds squared equal to zero, you would have to effectively travel on a light-like world line to reach that point, starting from some origin. And then if you're trying to look at a point, say, all the way over here now, in which the line element is greater than zero, we say that this is space-like separated, space-like separated, and now this essentially means that you would not be able to reach that point starting from this origin in space-time without travelling faster than this speed of light, or without following a world line which is space-like. So we should be really clear about what this means. All, all this means by we're not able to reach this point means that we're not able to reach this point in space-time. We could eventually get to this specific point in space, but we just couldn't get there quick enough to arrive there at the space-time point specified by this time t. So this causal future represents all the events which you can reach in time, in space-time, without travelling faster than the speed of light. So if you've got an event over here that you need to be at, but your origin starts here, there's no way that you can get there without travelling faster than the speed of light. You could eventually reach the location where you needed to be, but you're just going to get there at some time later. Okay, so I'll just summarise what we have kind of started looking at here. We've started probing into the Minkowski geometry by essentially exploring the space or the line element. By exploring the line element and looking at constant distances in the geometry, we're looking at constant distances from the origin. And now, if you remember in the Euclidean geometry, we saw that these were just simply circles in the geometry. All the points that lie at a constant separation from the origin just lie on a circle. But now, as we've seen in the Minkowski geometry, points that lie on constant, that, that, that lie at a constant distance from the origin, not only do they not lie on circles, they lie on these much more elaborate hyperbole. The particular, if you like, character or the positioning at which these points lie, are in Minkowski space depends on whether or not this line element is now positive or negative. And we have the stark difference to the Euclidean case where we could only have positive distances. In Minkowski space we can have zero and even negative distances. And I've sort of started briefly seeing how these two kind of regions of Minkowski space correspond to, or at least physically now, would correspond to the sort of 
future and past of what you can reach within space time. And I've kind of started briefly introducing you to the idea that this line of zero separation essentially corresponds to something to do with this light speed which I introduced here. Even though I don't want to be calling this a speed yet, we should just be realising that this C essentially controls the gradient of this line. And obviously we know that the gradients of lines are, at least in space-time diagrams, they're associated with speeds. And so we should have at least some kind of inkling now that there's something going on with this C parameter and this ds squared uh, light cone definition. So, as I've kind of alluded to now, we're going to be able to do a lot of analysis on diagrams like this using this line element, because essentially these line element level curves that we've drawn are going to stay the same, regardless of what coordinate system we're drawing on our space-time. So as we construct new coordinate systems on space-time, we can just draw them on this same picture and use our level curves of the line element to match up different quantities and different coordinate systems. So as we can see here, we're always dealing with kind of the squares of quantities. We're talking about s squared or ds squared. We could just equally consider taking this square root and just simply consider, well, I could have now put in a plus or minus here as well. But now we just consider the actual distance rather than squared distance. And so if we look at our picture here, we realise that we've got ds squared being negative and positive. If ds squared is negative, then this means that ds, or just s, is going to have to be an imaginary quantity. And so we might feel kind of uncomfortable about the fact that some of our distances that we're measuring in Minkowski space are actually imaginary. So any time-like separated point from the origin, this distance here is going to be an imaginary number, so that the squared distance comes out as being a negative number. So really this is just kind of one of the places where the convention that we chose is maybe not quite the best choice. It is a perfectly valid choice, we just kind of have to deal with the fact that our time-like distances are being imaginary. Usually, or the majority of distances that we're going to be interested in looking at are time-like, since space-like distances kind of correspond to, well, they correspond to observers that are going to be travelling faster than this speed of light, which we're going to see is kind of not physically possible. And so having space-like distances correspond to imaginary numbers kind of makes space-like distances more, or at least feel more physically inaccessible. But if we choose our minus plus 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 convention, we just have to kind of deal with the extra fact that our time-like distances are imaginary. And so this is potentially going to introduce a few extra factors of i, or we could just introduce the factors of i ourselves to get rid of the imaginary distances. But it's simply just due to our convention, when, when we choose minus plus plus plus, time-like distances are imaginary.